Welcome to the Rob Seco Field Ready Podcast with your host, Jim Robinson. Hello, and welcome back to the Rob Seco Field Ready Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Robinson. It seems like every spring we get an opportune planting window of two to three weeks before the actual insurance date hits. And for many geographies, this would be kind of the end of March or so. But as soon as that great planting window opens up and people get going, it it tends to turn a little bit cold, rainy, wet, cloudy for quite a while. Sometimes it feels like an eternity. One of the biggest threats to seedlings during these cold, wet periods is pythium. So today we're going to answer the questions of what is pythium? How does it impact your crop and how can you best manage it? To answer that today with us, we have Nate Meyer. Welcome back, Nate. Ah, good to be here, Jim. So Nate, what is pythium? So pythium, um, we always like to think that it's a fungus, but technically it's not. It's a fungus-like parasite um, that consists of oomyces. Uh, One of the interesting things about pythium is uh, it needs water to move from plant to plant. Mm -hmm. So it needs running water and zoospores. So it more or less swims to the root areas of the plant. So that's why when Jim said the cold, wet periods, that's exactly what it needs. So it's um, a fungus-like um, <clears throat> excuse me, parasite that you'll find across a lot of crops. Uh, today we're going to be talking about corn, but it also is the main seedling damping off in soybeans, wheat, rye, and a lot of other crops. Mm-hmm. Uh, one other thing that could be a problem for this is anybody that's growing uh, in greenhouses and a monoculture, uh, another place where it could be very prolific. Yep, it can be really difficult to manage when you have a closed environment with a lot of moisture, humidity, and temperatures can get cool. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, Nate, in corn specifically, you know, the, the pythium is a broad topic. It attacks a lot of different plants and, and crops. But in corn specifically, what are the symptoms of pythium? So the main thing I look for if I'm out in a cornfield, um, I'll see where corn is starting to stunt off compared to some of the other crops around or some of the other plants around there. Uh, usually I look for that in would be a low hole, uh, maybe some areas of compaction. Uh, where that's holding water a little bit more than other areas of the field. Uh, after I find these plants, uh, n- next best thing to do, or the thing to do after that is to start digging them up. Um, as you look at the seed down there and the mesocotyl, in a healthy plant, they should be firm, white, cream colored, mm-hmm. something that's actively growing and not infected. A lot of times when we find these, or I should say almost all the time when we find something infected by pythium, we're going to see kind of a rot. So it's mm-hmm. going to be brown, girdled, uh, not that nice white or cream color that we're normally looking for. Um, so what it's doing there, it's infecting the roots in the mesocotyl. And th- this is important because the mesocotyl acts as the conduit for all the nutrients to feed the growing seedling until the plant can collect or produce enough of its own resources via photosynthesis or uptake through the roots. Mm-hmm. So one of the other things with pythium is uh, when you're looking for it out in the field, a lot of times you're going to find other diseases with it, mm-hmm. whether that's fusarium, uh, some other fungicide or um, I'm sorry, um, some other diseases there, or it could also be some herbicide injury Mm -hmm. that's causing something like that as well. So yeah, it's often really difficult to identify for sure. You know, with pythium, if you send in a sample, you often find pythium, rhizoctonia, fusarium all together. And so the causal organism is tough to find. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, one thing about pythium is it, it really needs to have those wet, cool and cloudy conditions. So that's where it's really going to thrive. Um, and if it stays that long enough, stays that way long enough, and the infection's bad enough, we can see damping off. Mm-hmm. So what that's going to happen there is essentially the plant is going to weather away and die. Yep. So so what you're saying is it, if conditions don't improve and, and everything, you, you can get plants that die. But a lot of these stunted plants, do they typically come back? Or, or at what point, you know, is it too far gone for these plants? So a lot of times what we'll see is we'll have uh, light infections of pythium and all of a sudden our weather will turn back to the warm, sunny conditions that corn loves and we like as well. And what happens there is that the plant will actually outgrow the pythium infection Mm -hmm. and it'll regain uh, all that, uh, not really reducing yield all that much in the field. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So So once, once the plant is able to recover far enough and grow far enough along that it actually starts putting down nodal roots is when it's no longer requiring that mesocotyl to draw nutrients from the seminal roots that are attached to the, the uh, kernel seedling, the original embryo. Uh, exactly. And so once it gets beyond that point, that's where you're, you're in the clear. Yep, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned a little bit about this earlier, but could you expand a little bit on what are the conditions that favor pythium? 
So just like any disease, you need to have three sides of the disease pyramid there. You need to have the host, you need to have the parasite or fungus, and then you need to have the right environment. Mm -hmm. And the environment for this one happens to be cool, wet, cloudy conditions. So not every area every year is going to have pythium. Mm -hmm. um, as we look to the west, not a huge concern year to year. But as we look to the states more to the east, the Inda, in Indiana, Ohio, parts of Missouri, that typically have a little bit cloudier weather, a little bit wetter wet weather, uh, that's where we're going to see it more of a yearly basis there. Mm -hmm. But doesn't mean that there's some areas like sporadically that are going to have those right conditions each year or every other year. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we always need to keep in the back of our mind that pythium could happen almost anywhere. Exactly. So, so to break down those, those three real conditions that you mentioned of, of, you know, once you have pythium in the soil, you know, it's, it's probably there in the majority of soils across the United States, but you said cool, wet, and extended periods of cloudiness. If we could break each of those down, you know, why is it that cool weather actually matters in, in this, um, in this regard for Pythium? Uh, pythium tends to, um, how would you put it, be more prolific mm -hmm. in, in that cool weather. Um, as soon as it gets to the warmer temperatures, it has a, a tougher time um, regenerating mm -hmm. and uh, more or less growing is the way we're going to look at it there. Mm -hmm. So um, the sooner we can get out of the wet and the cool, the better. Exactly. And, and the wet is important. And you mentioned this at the beginning of the episode is that these zoospores will actually swim to the roots in order to, to infect. And so you need enough moisture there to allow the motility of these, these pythium organisms to get there. So that's where the wet conditions are, are important. And now the cloudiness, why, why is it that cloudy weather is important? Because it's not like Pythium cares if it's sunny or cloudy. Right. The cloudy weather is going to be important as, as we're looking at the corn growth itself. So we need sunlight to push around photosynthesis and help that corn plant grow. Heat as well. So all, all those things that the corn plant's lacking, the uh, Pythium enjoys. So yeah. as soon as it switches to corn weather, corn starts to grow and outgrows the Pythium. Perfect. Excellent. So, you know, there's... Pythium can cause a lot of damage in corn. It can cause thing, uh, enough stand loss in bad enough conditions that you may want to consider replanting. But, but really, what are the things that a farmer can do to manage Pythium? So there's a few different things that we can look at um, as a farmer going out there and wanting to do something about Pythium. Uh, the first one some people might be tempted to do is push back that planting date. Uh, wait until we know we're going to have warmer soils. Uh, the conditions are looking perfect where we're dry, sunny, and warm. Mm -hmm. um, not the one that I suggest. Mm -hmm. uh, Why the, is that? Well, the main reason for that, Jim, is that if we do that, we're starting to lose yield by not planting at the opportune time. Mm -hmm. uh, the longer we're going to wait to put the crop in the ground, um, the less yield we're going to get at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. We've talked a lot about that on the show. Right. Yes. <laughs> So another thing a, a farmer might look at is, hey, I need to switch up my hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, certainly that's something to look at, but as far as we can tell, there's not a hybrid to hybrid difference between Pythium. Mm -hmm. uh, my suggestion would be is look for something that has strong emergence and strong seedling vigor. If Pythium is going to be a concern and you want to switch up your, your hybrid there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, well, that, that's an excellent way to think about it because as we know, you know, you can outgrow Pythium in terms of, you know, the plant itself when it can get down its nodal roots. So th those factors certainly make sense, but there's not necessarily a ton of data that supports that. It's just a logical management strategy you can use in hybrid selection. Exactly, exactly. And, and the last one, and probably the most widely used and the one that we rely, rely upon the most is going to be the use of a seed applied fungicide. Mm -hmm. So a couple ones that have been in the market for quite a while, uh, menfenoxam, metalaxyl, have done a very good job on pythium in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but just like everything else in nature, it finds a way. And there's certain um, isolates now that have become resistant to pythium. Mm -hmm. So always we need to look at that and manage it. Uh, there are new products hitting the market all the time. Uh, one of them, uh, Vi Viantis, uh, looks like it's going to have very good control over Pythium, mm -hmm. uh, something that we should be able to look at this summer and moving forward. So yep. Exactly. Probably won't see a wide acre launch until about 2022 and into 2023, but uh, we do expect Viantis will have very good control over Pythium. Uh, since it's such a diverse species, you know, Mephinoxum and, and Metalaxyl do do a fantastic job on the majority of isolates and, and pythium species but like you said you know there are some geographies where they just have very little activity because they've been used since the early 80s correct mm -hmm. yep yep and then 
nature finds a way. <laughs> Absolutely. So Nate, just to kind of summarize overall everything we've talked about so far, you know, Pythium in corn is a significant seedling disease in corn that's, that's caused by a fungus-like organism. It is sensitive to fungicides because it's closely related to fungi, but it's not necessarily fungus itself. It infects the seedling, most likely the mesocotyl itself or the kernel, and, and cause basically a girdling or rotting of that mesocotyl so it starves out the seedling as it grows, causing stunting and eventually damping off if, if conditions are right for it. But the majority of time, with warm, drier weather, the corn plant is able to put down its nodal roots, feed itself, and, and grow through, causing minimal yield loss at, at worst. Uh, you know, at, at very, very worst, you can get some plants that die, but it's typically not a huge concern. Uh, conditions that generally favor pythium are those wet, cold, cloudy, cloudy conditions that can cause basically further proliferation of the, the pythium itself, as well as the conditions to allow it to swim and, and get to the roots or the seedling, and then you know preventing the pl- corn plant from growing. The best management strategy is by far to use a, a seed-applied fungicide. So seed treatment is going to be your best option overall. Anything you want to add to that? No, Jim, I think you did a great job of summing it up there. Um, I, I think you're 100% right that the seed applied fungicide is something that if you're in an area where it's concerned for pythium year in, year out, mm-hmm. that you need to make sure is on your seed. Absolutely. With that, I think we can say that be sure to tune in on the 1st and 15th of every month for new episodes. And until then, stay field ready. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Rob Seco Field Ready Podcast. Join us next time to be field ready. A Parkville Media Production.